Hello, it's Deanie, and today I'm going to be talking about Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And I originally found this book through Books with Shay, and I'm going to leave a link to her video in the description. So I originally read this book from the library, and upon completing it, I was so absolutely in love with it that I was like, I must go out and buy it immediately, so I have it on my shelf. So if I ever need a book that just brings me absolute pure joy, I have it on hand. <laughs> that is how much I adore this book. So throughout this video, I'm going to talk kind of like a review of it, although I kind of spoiled how much I love it, and then also a discussion of a lot of the important topics that get brought up and discussed in this book. So what is it about? In it, we follow Chloe, who is this kind of computer geek. She does like website design, and then she's also chronically ill as she has fibromyalgia and chronic migraines. So she has this near-death experience because she almost gets hit by a car, and you know how your like life flashes before your eyes? Well, she had that happen and then she was like, I need to get a life. So like th the title is very apt, like get a life flowing around because she's like, I need to do something with my life because I feel like I'm really boring and my life is boring and whatnot. So she decides to make this list because she's also like this super organized person in that way. She's like, I will make lists mainly because she has, because of her mi like migraines and fibromyalgia, sometimes she doesn't always remember things well, so she's also really organized with lists. So she likes them. She makes a list of all the things that she wants to do to kind of get a life, as what she thinks of it as getting a life. And one of the first things is move out of her parents' home and get her own apartment, live on her own, do her own freelance work with website stuff. And so she does that, and that's where she meets Red, who is the superintendent of the building kind of by day, and then an artist by night, and she realizes that he's an artist because she may have spied on him once or twice or maybe three times as part of her list. But after doing that, they kind of don't exactly get along right away because there's some issues on both of their ends, but Chloe realizes that Red could maybe help her with her list, and so through that connection, they start, you know, helping each other. She helps him with his artistry by helping him design a website, and then he helps her with her list, and that's kind of how they get their friendship and then relationship going, because it also gets a little bit steamy, actually a lot of bit steamy. And so yeah, that's how the book starts off, and then you watch them get to know each other and help each other out, and it's just so adorable. Like, it's a bit over the top because it is like, it's slightly cheesy dialogue, but it's really cute. It's like watching a Hallmark movie or one of those like Netflix movies that come around during Christmas time and it's just so cute. I love it. I don't care that it's like weirdly sarcastic. Chloe has this like dry sense of humor and Red is just has a biting wit and they just go together so great and I love it so much. So some people might find it just over the top cheesy and might be turned off by that. But I absolutely loved it. I was like, give me more of this because it's so cute. And I was just smiling throughout it. And I loved them to like Chloe and Red together. They really worked off of each other really well in their personalities. And then just like seeing them grow as people throughout it. You get to see good character development. So got great characters. You got fun dialogue. You got steamy situations and it's just great. Genuinely from beginning to end I just could not stop smiling and just being so happy. 100% loved this book. So that's kind of like my review of it. Characters and everything and then on top of that you have great discussions and so for the rest of this video I'm going to talk about specific topics that get brought up throughout it and why I think it was done so well and why it's also kind of like important discussions and kind of important representation. So in that regard, I'm going to kind of do spoilers because in order to discuss the rest of the book, I do need to like, well, to discuss the rest of the topics, I do need to bring up like context from the book. So if you just want to know that it's a great book, it's a great book. Please read it if you're into romance and even if you're not into romance, it could be a really fun book. Maybe you just want something really cute that makes you happy. <laughs> like me, I was so happy. <laughs> but yeah, so rest of this video is going to include some spoiler parts. Okay, so for discussion wise, some of the topics that get brought up are like chronic illness and then past relationship trauma that you need to like learn to get through and really just kind of past, past issues that you're still dealing with in the present and learning how to 
get through them and learning about yourself and whatnot. So first I'm going to talk about the chronic illness representation and the discussions that get brought up throughout the story. So with Chloe being chronically ill with her fibromyalgia, some of the topics that get brought up are her being dismissed because people don't necessarily believe that she was ill. Things like her withdrawing into herself, losing friendships, and then also wanting to not be defined by her illness, and then also the concept of getting a life. So first I'm going to talk about the concept of not being believed that you have an illness and also like either being dismissed with your illness or kind of like having it be dis um, diminished. So I thought this was done really well because there are times that people might not necessarily believe that you are ill, especially if you look physically abled. It doesn't mean that you are actually physically abled. It can be one of those invisible illnesses. So she had a um, ex-fiance who they ended their relationship because he didn't believe her. He would just, you know, dismiss her like, oh, it's, it's nothing. And that's one of the things where you have to just believe someone like she's in pain. She was in constant pain. She needed people in her life who could help her and he wasn't the one. And that's really hard to deal with when you have something and people either don't believe you and then you have like that happen. And so then you start withdrawing into yourself, which then leads to friendships being lost because you just don't know how, you don't trust anyone. You don't know how to handle a situation. So in the book, Chloe has fibromyalgia. Now I don't have fibromyalgia, but what I do have is IBS, which is an intestinal disorder. And then GERD, which is essentially like really bad acid reflux because my esophagus doesn't like working <laughs> really well. Essentially my digestive system just kind of sucks at being a digestive system a lot of the time. So I really enjoyed just everything that went on with these discussions because they're, when I first got sick, I've had IBS and GERD now for about five years. And when it was first happening, I really withdrew because I didn't understand what was going on. And I was like, what's going on in my body? And I was scared. And then you withdraw also because you don't know if your friends will want to hang out with you because you can't do the same things that you used to be able to do. So it's kind of like this you're scared and you don't know how to say that you're scared and you don't know if your friends will want to hang out with you and they might not be reaching out to you as well and then you're just like okay I'll just become a hermit. I don't really want to but I don't know my other options. But then as life goes on you kind of learn what is happening with your body and whatnot and then it kind of goes into the not wanting to be defined by your illness. So Chloe in the book was very scared to admit that that's she had fibromyalgia to read and everything because she didn't want, one, to not be believed, and then two, she doesn't want to be defined by it. She's more than just her fibromyalgia. She is this creative person who has this dry sense of humor, who can do really interesting design stuff. She is this whole person, and yes, her illness is part of herself, but it's part of a whole and she wants to be looked at as a whole person. And sometimes people can just look at you if you're, if they know you're chronically ill and that becomes at the forefront and you're like, it's part of me and you should not dismiss it and should not ignore it because that's also hurtful because I have to deal with this every day. It's part of me. So you don't want it to be just ignored, but you also don't want it to be the only thing that people think about you kind of as. And I know in my life that happened to me before. And it, a previous job that I had to quit. It didn't matter that I was a good worker. It didn't matter any of these other things. I had my boss pretty much call me a sickly person. It didn't matter that I had good work reviews. It didn't matter that my manager really enjoyed me. And thank God for my manager because I would have quit so much sooner if she hadn't had been as nice as she was because she knew that I had, you know, my digestive issues and she treated it as just kind of secondary. She's like, you're a good worker, but I'm also not going to dismiss it and I'm going to see if you're okay, <laughs> like if you're feeling okay. Whereas my boss would describe me as a sickly person to people unnecessarily and one time even just completely diminished what I go through. It was at a work event when uh, co-workers from across like departments that I didn't even know were at this thing and I overheard her go, oh, that's Deanie, she can't eat the same food because she has tummy problems. And I was just sitting there seething because I'm like, one, 
you should not ever talk about someone's illness, medical problems, anything to other people <laughs> without their consent. So that's a problem. And then two, just to completely diminish it as, oh, Deanie has tummy problems. It's like, I'm not a child. Um, I'm an adult and I know what I'm dealing with. And it's more than tummy problems. And also just don't. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, that happens in real life. You don't necessarily think it does. You really hope it doesn't, but it does. So you don't want to be defined by it. You don't want it to be ignored if you're willing to like share it with people. You don't want it to be diminished. Diminished? Diminished. That's the word. You don't want it to be diminished. And so then the last bit with the chronic illness is kind of Chloe learning how to get a life. And part of it is as she's going through her list, she realizes, I don't actually like these things that are my, on my list and I need to change them. And so she starts reflecting on what she missed about her past. And she was like, I miss just having fun with friends. I miss that laughter. I miss kind of that core thing. It wasn't the event that we went to or whatever. It was the friendship. It was, you know, whatever. And so it's kind of learning in this new life, especially if in Chloe's case, and in also my case, it gets discussed as a before and after. You had this event that kind of splits your life. The before, the healthy, and then the after where you're in this new normal, in this new chronic illness, chronic disorder, you know, what have you. So you have to learn, okay, this is my new normal. This is how my body is functioning now. So it's learning to come to know yourself and what you really want out of life. And she learned what she wanted out of life. She wanted to get to those back to those friendships. She wanted to keep Red because he was just such an amazing person. He was so sweet and artistic and just had such, so much life in him that she wanted to keep him and wanted him to be happy. And then let's move on to Red and kind of the topics that his life brought up, which was dealing with past relationship trauma because he had an ex who would pretty much treat him as an object and was abusive towards him verbally. So he, once he realized he had to get out of that relationship because he didn't want to be treated as an object. And so that's kind of where he's coming from. He's so worried that he'll be treated as an object again. And so that's where there's some conflict between him and Chloe because he needs to learn himself what his issues are. And he does. He eventually realizes, I need help. I have this past trauma that I need to get through. So I need to reach out to therapy because I can't do this on my own. So it's kind of like this really proud moment where he's like, I, I'm going to get help because that'll help me. And it also help um, his relationship with Chloe, which was really nice to see. So then you get to see him grow as a person. And then you get to see them grow together as a couple and learn how to communicate because Chloe doesn't necessarily know how to communicate what she's going through and he doesn't necessarily know how to communicate what he's going through. And even when they start learning about each other, they don't know like kind of like the next steps. They're like, okay, I understand where you're coming from and you're understanding where I'm coming from, but now we need to learn how to communicate as that next step. And so that was like a really important thing that I think all couples should learn how to do. But then when you're in that case, when you're bringing kind of this past relationship that the other person doesn't necessarily know too much about, it's, it, it's important to learn how to communicate that and working together. Because sometimes when people read books like this, they'll be like, oh, that's a miscommunication trope. I can't stand that. But it's really kind of honest. And you can see in this book, they explain why each of them doesn't know how to communicate in a tense situation. And you see them afterwards realizing, okay, we don't understand how to do this. Let's work together and move forward because that's another important part to be recognize the situation, recognize what you did wrong and, and then be like, okay, how, how do we move forward? How do we fix this? And I know that's kind of like the same in my life with Cameron and actually Red reminded me a lot of Cameron because Red was like this artistic bad boy and he had like long hair and was like a biker and whatnot, but he's an absolute syndrome role and Cameron is the same way where when we first started dating, he had this really long hair, he has gauges, he's the sixth foot three kind of big guy, but he's an absolute sweetheart. So I loved seeing that as well because I, I loved Red for that reason, but it's also like in my own relationship with Cameron, it's just learning that for me with my chronic problems, <laughs> learning how to be like, hey, I'm having 
these problems, you might not necessarily understand what it feels like, but we'll get through it and kind of where I'm coming from, where he's coming from, and we've learned throughout a relationship how to communicate better. And that's another thing that I really liked about this book is to, it's kind of like a nice way to explain what it's like to have a chronic illness. Because again, I don't have fibromyalgia, but there's a lot of similarities kind of in dealing with a chronic issue that can be, you know, across disorders, what have you. So yeah, that's kind of why I just really love this book. It is cute. The characters are just amazing. They're funny. It's kind of over the top, but it's great because I, I love it because it's over the top. And then it also has these really great discussions. So overall, an amazing book. I would strongly recommend it. And Talia Hibbert has another book coming out after this, which is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And I will 100% be picking that up immediately because this was great. So I'm going to go with that's also going to be great. So yes, super excited. Love this book. We'll probably love that one. But that's it for this discussion. Let me know if this any of this discussion resonated with you or if you now want to pick up this book. Thanks for watching.